In this tutorial, I want to take a more in-depth approach at how to bring in a Rhino model to Unreal Engine and carry with it a uh, texture mapping. So we know that using the Fabric Engine, uh, we don't have to go through 3D Studio Max and unwrap UVs and kind of set everything up that way because it generates the light channels for us. But at the same time, we do have to do something with texture mapping. And to do that, um, without anything extra installed, I can just go in and use the Rhino Render um, and go to a material editor. Uh, I'm going to create a new material and say I want a more type. Um, I'll do that, that was pretty quick. I'm going to click a new material. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm going to use anything here, but I can click more types and say that I want to start from scratch just a basic material. And I'm going to call it checker. Now the checker material, I have all these options available to me and I've downloaded a uh, black and white tile that's just black and white checkers. Um, so I'll go in and I'll grab that black and white checker. There's an important thing to see here is that I have the black and then white, white and then black. So their corners are opposite of each other. Sometimes you'll find images that have uh, black, white, black, white, and it'll end in black. It's hard to see, it ends up being a strange pattern on your surface. So I just wanted opposite corners. So I'll say OK. Um, and with that material, I have my base here. I can just right click and assign to selection. And using middle click, I'm in rendered preview. I can see that this object has uh, you know, a texture applied to it. Um, I can go in and let's just first delete the mapping. This is how it initially appeared. Um, but if I click my object, go to properties, go to texture mapping, this one I know I want a box map. So I'll say box map. Uh, I will say bounding box is fine uh, using the world coordinates with a cap. Uh, now it's a little bit better, but Essentially, I know that this will become my travertine, and those are uh, regular squares. So I'm going to guess and say, OK, each tile in my X, Y, and Z needs to be 250 um, pixels or units. Um, now, I know that I may not want my uh, travertine to be this small of a tile, but then I have the ability to go in Unreal Engine and control that that material is you know, twice as big or four times as big or 7.128 times as big. I'll control that. Uh, it, I'm just setting up my mapping system here. Now, the Barcelona Pavilion, almost everything is uh, square or orthogonal, so that's going to be easy to do with lots and lots of bump mapping. I also know that the bench and this back wall are travertine, so is this wall, that's all travertine, and they use the same size pieces, so I can just kind of copy this map all around. When we get back here to the statue, which is a mesh with lots and lots of faces, um, this won't be something that I want to use a box map on. That would never look that good. So here, let's go ahead and just apply, uh, go to material. Um, I'm going to say, uh, actually, let's just do it this render, render editor, right click, assign to selection. So if we click off, uh, all right, that's definitely not right. In fact, I'm going to take this uh, statue, I'm going to go to uh, the show and hide, and I'm going to invert and hide everything else. So now we can just see the statue. Um, I will go to texture mapping. And the first thing I'm going to try is just to do a spherical mapping to see if everything was just kind of spherically mapped on, if that would be um, at a fine enough scale with an even texture all the way around. So I'll say bounding box again. And, you know, that probably won't work. Um, it's kind of a cool pattern, but I wanted even textures everywhere. So let's go ahead and delete that one and just see if we can apply a surface mapping. Um, and there we go, we're starting to get there. So now I will go on and say that I want uh, a greater repetition. And let's repeat that 10 times in each direction of the model. And now that we have that texture on there, you can see where, where we had a finer mesh up here. We have lots of repetition. Um, elsewhere, we have some strange seams. But knowing this will ultimately be a bronze material, I think this is sufficient. So let's type show and get everything back. Um, and I'm not going to narrate this, but I'm going to go through and apply textures to everything you see in the scene. The other thing I'm going to do here is this is our piece of glass. Actually, if I type select layer and I say I want to use my selection tool and I'll select this, so I'll take all my glass and I'll say OK. I'll do the same thing. I'll go to my show and hide menu, invert and hide everything. You can see that the glass here is actually just a singular plane, and that was giving me problems before. So I'm going to offset all of these surfaces to give the glass a little thickness. So I'll select the mouse all and say offset surface. Um, 
if they're all flipping one direction or other, it doesn't really matter. I'm not offsetting them that much, but they're gonna offset being solid. And I'm gonna say each piece of glass needs to be a quarter inch thick. So there we go. Um, and I'll type select last to make sure that the, the, the original surfaces aren't there. It doesn't look like they are. So I'll hide these. There's nothing left of my scene. That means that I deleted my original surfaces as I offset them to become solids. I'll type show. Um, and I'll just let the recording run as I texture everything through. All right, and just like that, I have a fully checkerboard uh, model. You can see that I don't really care about the water here and here. Um, that's going to be see-through. Same with the roofs. They're just going to be a diffuse white material, so it doesn't really matter how much they're textured. And the same as goes for the glass. Um, the one thing you did see is probably that these three iconic stone walls, this one here, the one on the inside, uh, and this one back here, are mapped with a bounding box that fit their size. The textures that I have, the JPEGs to make those textures, are made up in such a way that they will fit perfectly uh, this scaled thing. So although we're seeing um, multiple tiles here, uh, these are no longer square, and that's because the mapping is the exact same size as the object itself, uh, so there'll be no tiling whatsoever when we create the materials in Unreal. So I saved it as the Barcelona Pavilion texture mapped. Uh, now I'm going to jump over to Unreal Engine and bring it in and start to create those materials. All right, so using the Fabric Engine plugin for Unreal, I was able to bring in my uh, model from Rhino, and it's, it's all grouped up by individual layers. Uh, and right now it doesn't look like much because I'm in a uh, Unreal project that only has a sky sphere in it. So coming to lights, I'm just going to get a skylight, and now you can see that it brought over my texture from before, so you can kind of get an idea of the mapping. I can also bring in a directional light, which will give it some nice shadows. Um, and I think we can start building our textures from here. Um, so to do that, uh, I'm going to start with the travertine. I'm just going to right click and create a new material called travertine. Um, I'm actually going to create two folders just to keep things organized. So these are going to be my materials, and these are going to be my textures. Uh, so travertine is going to be into the material folder, and then under, let's see, where did I keep all this stuff at? Um, travertine. I've got some materials that I will just drag and drop into my textures folder should take a second to import them. Great, there they are. So then I can go to my materials. In my travertine material, I'm going to hit T and click twice because I'm going to sample those textures. So this one will be my, uh, I believe it's this one. There we go. And that one, oh, sorry, wait. Um, so this is my base color, and this is my uh, roughness. I'll give a little texture to that. Um, I will save this material. And I'm going to replace what was on uh, the base with travertine. Ooh. So it looks like we have a common problem in that this is a single surface and it's not two-sided. So let's go back into travertine. Um, and down here, we should be able to set it to be a two-sided material. Here we go, two-sided material. So I'll save this. Give it a second, and there we go. Now we have it on uh, both faces. And I can see that my texture um, is at least oriented correctly. The scale might be a little off, but I can update that. Um, so we're going to do the bench, and this other wall, and this back wall are all going to be travertine. Travertine for you, travertine for you. Um, all right, and then I'm going to keep building things through. We'll create the uh, maybe this first green wall first. So create a new material, 
uh, I'm gonna call it green wall one. Under my content, under textures, uh, I'm going to bring up my uh, green stone. And drop that in there. This is well, really, if I was smart, I'd probably rename this, and I can. Uh, green stone one. Stone one. There we go. So content and then materials and my green stone, my green wall is going to be a texture. So hitting T and clicking. This one's going to be my green stone. I'm going to plug that in as the base material. Uh, I'm going to set this, uh, you hitting one, I'm going to set that this is a little bit metallic. I want some gloss on this. So I'll say 0.5 and we'll plug that into metallic. I'll click one and get a one variable again. And this time I'll say that my roughness is uh, not zero, but 0.125. Uh, roughness in metallic equals shiny. So a little bit of, if I were to increase this and say, oh, you know what, let's be at 0.8, that means it's rougher and it's more matte. So I'm gonna say 0.125 just to get a little shine on this. And if I look at this cube, you can see there's some gloss to it. So we'll save that, say okay. And so for this green wall, this one was uh, mapped in a way that it's just bounding box. So this whole texture should automatically map to be its full size, and it, sure enough, it did. So that's great. Um, I'm going to create glass and metal. Um, little by little, I'll work through this, and actually I could create a, a white diffuse for the lid, and then ultimately I want water and stone, but very quickly we're going to come up with a model that's uh, textured.